Today we're going to talk about emergency preparedness. We're going to look at the 10 steps to preparing for a general emergency situation. We're going to have a little bit of fun looking at some cinematic advice it might be best not to follow. Hello and welcome to Vancouver, otherwise known as Hollywood North. If you're a movie buff like I am, then you might recognize a few famous landmarks around town. One of my favorite kind of films is the disaster film. They're great, aren't they? Especially with the state of special effects technology today. And yet, despite all that realism, those movies really aren't very realistic. Today we're going to take a light-hearted look at what we can do to make sure our families are prepared for a real emergency situation. For example, rogue comets might sound scary, but they probably aren't at the top of the list of things we should be preparing for. Every community is different, and so step one is to identify the hazards that your community faces. Well, you know the hazards in B British Columbia are, there's 57 known hazards, and they're divided into three categories, uh, natural, man-made, and social. The natural ones are everything from earthquakes and uh, volcanoes, uh, landslides, avalanches, and man-made are things like chemical spills and power outages. And the last one is a social sort of aspect of our hazards, uh, blockades and protests and riots and terrorism. And those are the things that we have to deal with in the province right now. In the movies, our hero is usually separated from his family, and so must set off on a perilous journey to find them. In reality, it's important that you and your family establish a meeting place, some place that is close to your home and easily accessible. Most importantly, make sure everyone remembers where it is. It's also a good idea to make arrangements with friends or family who live outside of BC to act as an out-of-area contact. If we have a large event like an earthquake, phone lines are likely to be down, cell phones likely won't be working. They could be overloaded or the circuits could be down, but quite often the long distance will work. So if you have a person identified out of the province that you can call, this may be the only way of contacting your family members. Each member of the family should keep this number with them at all times, and not just in your cell phones. In case the cell network stops functioning, keep the number on paper as well. Also, it's a good idea to post it near the home phone. Our movie hero is usually caught unprepared, and so is forced to improvise a lot of food and basic equipment. All the more reason to think ahead, and to put together a grab-and-go kit Grab and go kit is what you're going to grab as you're leaving your house. It's going to contain the items that you need so you will be prepared. Some of the typical items you find in the grab and go kit is a change of clothes, your medications if you're on any specific medications, things like toothbrushes, um, you know, personal hygiene items, uh, an extra set of car keys, keep money. We all have bank cards and you know, if the power's out, the bank machines won't be working. The interesting part about most of the grab-and-go kits are that you don't have to go out and purchase or anything. You probably have all the things in a grab-and-go kit that you need around the house just lying around that you can just put together. All you have to do is spend a couple hours doing that and you can make it a family activity and make it fun. So you really want to cater your emergency grab-and-go kits to what your family's needs are. If you have small kids, you're going to want things like formula, diapers. So look at each individual in your family and make sure you've got the items they need. And don't forget about your pets. If you have pets, you should also have a grab-and-go kit for them as well.
One thing the movies rarely show is our heroes eating or drinking. In reality, the body needs food and water to perform normally. You know, the food that you have should be non-perishable, things like, you know, canned foods, uh, you know, soups, uh, you know, vegetables. It's a good idea to store some extra supplies in the house. Canned foods, for example, with a long shelf life and which require little or no preparation. And foods that won't increase thirst. We all need water to survive and you've got to have water in all of your kits. Uh, you can buy the bottled water, you can buy the foil pouches, you can you know, store water in your home if you shop at big stores like Costco or Save-On and you buy the big water jugs, buy a few extra so you've got water on hand. We all need water and you know, you're going to require at least four liters per person per day. It's also a good idea to earthquake proof your home with door fasteners and other securing devices. I think there's some things you can do to um, lessen the impact uh, of, of uh, things in your home for an earthquake. For example, you can you know, tie down or make sure that your water heater is tied down properly and affixed to the wall, affixed to the studs in the wall. And you know the, when you're on a boat and the rolling motion you feel, often that's what an earthquake will feel like. So if you go through your home, you're going to see what's going to fall over, come down and injure family members. And of course, you'll want to make sure your home is equipped with smoke detectors and fire extinguishers. Make sure you know how to shut off your gas, water and electricity, and make sure the whole family is familiar with the evacuation route in case the fire alarm sounds. When emergencies happen, we all have to help each other out. That's why it's important that we don't forget the more vulnerable members of our society, children, the elderly, and people with disabilities. If you're planning for your family, you need to think about young people in particular. If you, if you have children or you're, you know, you're looking at uh, higher risk populations or special populations, as sometimes uh, the folks are referred to. And, and you know, it's, it's important to have a look at uh, what some of the needs are. Do you have you know, elders? Do you have seniors? Do they have, do they have medication issues? Do they have so, uh, glasses? Simple, simple things like having an extra pair of glasses if your glasses break. And of course, our four-legged friends. They give us love and companionship at the best of times, so their health and welfare is especially important at the worst of times. You've got to include your pets. We all saw in Hurricane Katrina that people would not evacuate simply because they could not take their pets with them. In Vancouver, we will allow pets at our community centers, but they may not be allowed inside due to health regulations. Finally, practice your plan. Have regular drills with your family and make sure it's updated when conditions change. Check your supplies periodically to make sure the best before dates are still good and get into the habit of exercising and updating your plan every six months. Daylight savings time is a good reminder to do this. Remember, emergencies do happen. Unlike in the movies, however, if we think ahead a bit and prepare, then there's no reason they have to be disasters.